In this video we are going to talk about everything this case has to offer and also what you need to consider before buying this case. Now the Cooler Master Master Box Q300L comes in two different variations and today we are going to talk about the normal Q300L. There is another version of this case which we are not going to cover in this video but if you are interested to know what is the difference between the two make sure to stay tuned until the end of this video after we will showcase the normal Q300L you will see that the difference between the two versions is very minor. In terms of price, the price of the normal version is much much cheaper and you can get this case in around 40 bucks uh, on Newegg or on Amazon with free shipping. A small correction here, the free shipping applies only to Amazon right now. On Newegg it's actually $6.99 for shipping inside the US. Now the case comes in two different colors. You can get the black one and the white one. And before we will dive into to see exactly what you should expect from building a computer in this case, let's take an overall look on the case and what it has to offer. So the first feature that Colormaster highlights with this case is the front panel I.O. As you can see, in contrast to other cases in the market, this case has the front panel mounted on its side. And not only that, you can actually change the position. So let's say if you want them to be mounted at the top, you can do so. If you want them to be mounted at the bottom, or you can completely go wild and put the front panel on the other side of the case. And talking about the side panel, the side panel is made out of acrylic and not tempered glass, which has its benefits and its downsides. I actually prefer acrylic side panels a little bit more than tempered glass. I think they're more safe. They don't break uh, very easily. They also a lot lighter and not that heavy as tempered glass side panels. The downside of acrylic side panels is the feel and the look. It feels kind of cheap and it doesn't look as great as tempered glass side panel but again in my eyes at least I know a lot of people don't like acrylic side panels I think it's much safer and also easier to handle and to move around. Talking about the size and the dimensions of the case so in terms of components compatibility you can put up to 160 millimeter length of a power supply 159 millimeters height of a CPU cooler and up to 360 millimeters in length of GPUs. In terms of water cooling, you can put up to a 240 millimeter radiator in the front. Unfortunately, there is no uh, mount at the top for a water cooler, but you can add extra fans. So if you really need that extra cooling, despite this case being pretty small, you have a lot of flexibility and room for cooling in this case. Now the case itself out of the box comes with only one 120 mm rear fan which doesn't have any lighting or RGB. So if you're interested in some fan recommendations make sure to check the description box down below the video so you can find some links for great fans that will pair great with this case. The case itself supports micro ATX or mini ITX length in motherboards. No room for full size ATX motherboards. Although in the reviews you will about to see that people who bought this case actually managed to put a full size motherboard in this case. That's because this case had two revisions and the newer revision does not support full-size ATX motherboards. We will expand and talk about it a little bit more in the reviews section in the second part of the video. The design of the case is such that the front and the top parts of the case are actually dust filters that are completely magnetic and removable without any screws or anything like that. 
You can see behind each dust filter the holes and spots where you can mount the fans or the water cooling radiator if you have one. And last but not least, before we jump to the review section, behind the motherboard tray you can find up to 28 millimeters of space for cable management, which is pretty exceptional. You can see by the image over here how much room you have for cable management, which is kind of surprising. I know a lot of mid-tower and even full-tower cases that doesn't have this kind of room at the back to route your cables. And this is due to the fact that this case is pretty chunky, so you want to make sure that you have enough room for it on your desk, as this case comes in around 9 inches of width and about 15 inches in height and length. These reviews are left by people who actually bought the case and used it. You can actually see pictures of their build and decide for yourself if this case is the right fit for you or not. So our first review will be by a verified owner named Hugh. Hugh says that the pros for him were a compact yet roomy enough for a big GPU and most standard CPU coolers. He went with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 black LED which is 157 millimeters in height and it fits just right with a millimeter or two to spare. So he went with a pretty big air cooler and he was still able to fit the cooler without any problem and close the side panel. He also mentioned the great cable management and the fact that you have tons of flexibility and compatibility for cooling and fans. What he didn't like about the case were the fact that above the motherboard tray there isn't enough space for a second fan and because he went with a pretty big air cooler he had some trouble actually fit the top fan for exhaust. So as you can see here in the picture it's pretty tight over here but because over here on the other side he has the fan and it's sticking out a little bit you can't really put another fan over here. It's not that big of a deal as two fans will be enough to exhaust hot air out of the case so it's not that big of a deal but it's something you should look for. He also says that the screws and threads are quite cheap and come close to stripping easily and you will see in the reviews that a lot of people mentioned that the build quality is not that great and the case feels a little bit flimsy and the metal is very thin. It is to be expected because it's not an expensive case so the build quality shouldn't be that crazy good but again for the price and eventually you build a computer in it you're not gonna touch it too much as long as it works it works right so no problem there. The overall review by Hugh he's saying great case for the money looks great on my desk nice and compact but could be slightly higher quality but you get what you pay for. Over here you can see the way Hugh mounted the fans at the front of the case and this is another shot where you can see he mounted his front panel I.O. at the bottom. So to be honest it looks very cool. The, the build looks very good, very clean and it fits perfectly on his desk. Our second review is by RJ from the Midwest. As you can see by the picture here RJ actually have a full-size ATX motherboard and the power supply is not mounted on the bottom as shown in the previous pictures but it actually mounted at the front. Now I know it is a bit confusing but I did some research and apparently the case had a revision update where they changed the position of the power supply instead of being at the front over here it's on the bottom over here. At first I thought you can pick which side you can put the power supply, is it on the bottom or at the front, but then I looked at some pictures and it didn't look right because as you can see in this picture it has all the PCI slots over here and you can see the power supply mount over here and not only that there's also an extension cord that goes to the power supply 
for electricity. Then I looked again at the pictures and you can see there's a cutout here for the power supply. I went to Cooler Master's website to see exactly how the case should come and I went to the menu and I saw that the case right now if you buy it comes with the PSU mounted at the bottom which in my opinion is a lot better than the PSU being in the front and here is why. As you can see in this review that was left by a verified owner named Jack, he complains a lot about the build experience with the first revision of the case. Again, this is not how the case comes in right now, but this is how it used to be where the front, when the power supply was mounted at the front. Now what happened in Jack's case, he used a 240 millimeter water cooling radiator and because the PSU is mounted at the front, he had to move his uh, pipes and cables to the left side of the case. When he did that, the pipes and uh, cables from the water cooling radiator were getting stuck at the top PCIe slot. So he ended up putting his graphic card at the bottom with two fans that blowing air directly at the GPU. And this is actually very bad and not giving a lot of uh, room and uh, for the air to move and actually cool the GPU. And you can see here in the pictures that the fit are very small and there's pretty much zero airflow going into this case with this configuration. Another problem is that you don't have any access to the power switch on your power supply and you have this weird extension cord going to the back of the case where you plug the computer to electricity from the back. So the power supply has to be pretty much always turned on and there is no way to turn it off unless you remove the side panel, which is quite awful to be honest. So yeah, Cooler Master realized that this configuration hurts the thermals and the cooling capabilities of this case. So they decided that they will mount the power supply at the bottom and will leave the space at the front for cooling. That resulted in a much better cooling for this case, but with the penalty of not being able to use a full-size ATX motherboard. And this case can fit only micro ATX motherboards. Now, to be honest, it's not that big of a deal. Today, full-size ATX motherboards are getting a lot less common as micro ATX motherboards comes with pretty much the same features as full-size ATX motherboards. And with the descending popularity of dual GPU configuration or even triple GPU configuration, there is no real need for full-size ATX motherboards unless you're a real baller and you have a ton of money growing on the trees and you want to spend a lot of money, then yeah, you buy a full-size ATX motherboard. But in that case, you're probably not gonna buy a $40 case. So are we all good with that? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, overall, I think this case looks great. I know some people uh, complain about uh, it being cheap and the build quality is not great but again it's not an expensive case as you can see in the pictures you can build a pretty good system in a case like that and it has its own special features such as the modularity of the front panel IO where you can put it pretty much wherever you like and also the size is pretty small it can fit pretty much anywhere let me show you actually a couple more pictures here from people who mount the case next to their table like this and i even saw someone mounted under the table in a slideable drawer like this now as promised i said in the beginning of the video that we're going to talk about the cooler master q300 l v2 and the only real main differences that I was able to find were the front panel I.O. is actually mounted at the top. You have an additional extra USB Type-C port at the front and everything else about the case is pretty much the same. It also fits micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards only, no full-size ATX motherboards 
they did change the uh, design just a little bit but it still looks the same pretty spacious for cable management and for cooling the front is still made by magnetic dust filters and other than that the side panel is actually made out of tempered glass and not acrylic i don't exactly understand why the, this case costs almost as double as the normal version is it because of the type c and the temper, tempered glass side panel is it really what uh, makes the manufacturing pro process a lot more expensive i don't really know but maybe we will leave that for another video until that thank you for watching full tower tv my name is rafael and i will see you in the next one